Red's Fly Shop. This is Bob. How may I help you today? Look at that. Woo! Day four is beginning. We're doing Spanish lessons and getting some really good windshield time. Uh, we're heading toward the Paloma Valley. Lots of good scenery, lots of good Spanish lessons. <laughs> With uh, Juancho, Juancho, Juanito, <laughs> and uh, Diego. <laughs> and uh, I'm teaching them English, they're teaching me Spanish, and we're learning how to say a few things. Uh, Juanito tiene, Juanito tiene gigante a bar, 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 bar. Bar -bar. Juanito, those of you that speak Spanish are just disgusted right now with my attempt, but Juanito has a large beard, and uh, I want you to say that in English, Diego. Juanito has a large beard. beard? Uno mas. Juanito has, Juanito has a large beard. <laughs> Yo entiendo. Very good. So, uh, the drive time. A lot of times you're going to drive an hour plus and um, you just want to enjoy all this windshield time, all the great scenery. Uh, we're driving through kind of a heavy forest right now, but the mountains around us are spectacular and uh, we're having fun. We're going to go over and uh, it's going to be kind of a casual day, kind of a semi-guided uh, experience where Diego will fish some, uh, Juanito's going to take some pictures. Okay, here's much better scenery. Juanito's going to take some pictures, and uh, I think we might fish with the, the mouse or the rat fly today. Maybe. Maybe try. Maybe, Maybe try, try, the, try place. Uh, oh, okay. Oh. Well, okay, we're going to stick to the Cantaria beetles uh, today, and uh, these mountains are just amazing. And they don't show up on a GoPro at all, but uh, you want to make the most out of your drive time, get a little Spanish lesson, uh, and then you can be very helpful in uh, teaching them English. It's like mutual survival. So uh, that's a fun uh, thing to be able to do. Uh, most of the guides, they speak very good English, but they're always wanting to learn just a little more, a little more, yeah. so as am I. So we'll check back in when we're actually out on the river. Okay, we're here. We had a little uh, great drive time. Uh, of course, we got a Spanish lesson on the way over, and <laughs> I was able to give a little bit of an English lesson. Uh, today is going to be all hiking, uh, fishing with dry flies and beetles. So today, I'm going to be out of the boat. I've been in the boat for three days, and I'm just delighted to be able to hike and just be on foot. So I'm going to throw everything I need in a backpack, and oh my God, look at that buck oh. that just landed on me. <laughs> is that thing dangerous, Diego? Peligroso, necesito? <laughs> Peligroso, necesito. Oh, tranquilo. Yo, 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 nerviosa, mi amigo. Dude, that is. I have never. Dude, that was so random. Dude. So, I have never oh, seen, I, I, I have never seen, it's okay, no, it's okay, Negra is okay, ah, okay. Negra is okay. Uh, I have never seen that insect before, that was a <laughs> bit terrifying, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, we're going to throw big beetles today, uh, there's an example, one yeah. on my hat, and it's primarily going to be, we're here during what is the peak of summer, it's the last week of January. Anytime you come December through March, beetles are going to be on the menu, but uh, this is an even numbered year, and that's where the big, the Cantaria beetle that you've seen in the other videos is abundant and present, and that's what we're going to be really uh, trying to have today is some good fishing on beetles or that crazy ass thing that just landed on my hand in the middle of a video. So, uh, but all waiting, all hiking today, uh, hoping we uh, pick up some nice fish in this beautiful. Uh, tributary stream here. Uh, it's a smaller river than we fished yesterday and I'm looking forward to getting in. Okay, here we are. Let's take a look. Uh, so we just, we're up on the bridge and we'll take a look at this river that we're going to hike and we're going to hike way up there and just hike, 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 hike. And we're going to get uh, just in the river channel itself. 
So we got a backpack full of flies, food, and water. And uh, the first fly I'm gonna fish is uh, just gonna be the uh, Alberta or Gordo in the green color. That's the Fat Albert beetle. And of course, uh, I've got that tied on a very small loop knot. And tippet size, you're going to need pretty strong tippet to turn these flies over, especially in the wind, which I'm sure you can hear. So I like a 1x leader. A lot of times I'll start with a 9 foot 2x, and then by the time I repair it, I'll run it back to about 1x. Um, but six weight for the wind, and um, we're just going to start hiking up the creek, looking for opportunities, both sight casting and blind casting in likely spots. Ready? Beautiful fire as well. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was too much. Whoa. Right along that cliff wall <laughs> on the old fat Albert. All right, let's go ahead and get a release of that beautiful brown right there. Woo. First fish. <laughs> so. My sixth trip to Patagonia. I've never fished this river before. This place is super awesome. I'm loving this already. We're only like 15, 20 minutes into the day and I've already got a fish to hand and a couple of other strikes. Sit. Oh, oh, oh. So little. Little one. Sit. Nice, there we go. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> right, that was great. Good call, Diego. Oh, it's a rainbow. Yes, a rainbow. Alright, so a little update. The uh Hey, you got him right there, nice. So the, here's a little update. The biggest fish I've caught was the very first one uh, mm -hmm. right down near the car. Caught uh, one more brown and uh, several more rainbows, haven't lost a fly. Let's just take a look at this, this trout here. Yeah, good looking fish. Yeah, let's get nice and close, beautiful. I mean, the water is unbelievably clear right there. Uh, now, I've never been to New Zealand, okay? Never once. But a lot of what people describe is walking up these incredible valleys like this with a river that's perfectly clear and clean. There's not a lot of insect life in here. There's no slime on the rocks, and it just makes it super easy to wade. You've got really great traction. The back casts are wide open, but from what I understand, this is a lot more trout than what I'd be finding in New Zealand. Maybe not quite as big, uh, but I am catching fish pretty regularly. Every time I get to any fishy area, I can, I can throw that beetle in there and uh, usually get a response or two. So uh, having a great time today and it feels really good just to be in the water on foot. 
with how hot it is here today. So hoping to find a couple more larger brown trout uh, upstream from here, but nothing to complain about catching 13 to 15 inch rainbows in, uh, in the edge of these riffles either. Way. Yeah, I got him over the lock. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, look at that fish. Whoa. Big brown. Oh. Go figure. <laughs> look at this. Well, here, I'll just handle him. So I hooked this rainbow. That was pretty sweet. Not complaining on that beetle up by that stick. And then, uh, yeah, there we go. Not bad. Good fun. But uh, what we were hollering about there was about a 20 inch brown, I mean, brown about this long slid right out of this tiny little channel when I hooked that rainbow and startled it. So who knows if I'd gotten a presentation at it or it was still up above, I'm not sure. But either way, I would have loved to have had that one that was in there. <laughs> Whoa! Ho -ho. Did you get the button? Yeah. Oh, I was reaching for my net. <laughs> That was fun. In that tiny little bucket right there. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, nice fish. Beautiful. Can't catch them in a prettier spot. Okay, there's a pretty nice trout that uh, just came up, swirled at my fly near the orange rock that's right there. We're gonna see if we can't get him with them. Nice fish. Wow. Button. Button. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice brown. Man, that was a that was a hard drift. There we go. Yep. Good, 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 good. Brother. <laughs> right on, brother. That was so cool. That fish was in like 12 inches of water. Uh, 12 inches of water, like tucked so tight up under that brush. And uh, the first time it came out and refused my fat Albert, so I put one of Diego's uh, hand tied beetles on right there and uh, was able to get that fish to charge out and grab it uh, right from under the tree. Let's take one quick look. Nice solid brown trout <laughs> and just again the most beautiful setting. It's amazing. I'm gonna give you just a tip. We've been walking upstream in this beautiful river and it is kind of noisy here, so I'll do my best to, to talk directly to the camera. But one thing I have found extremely helpful today is having the ability to switch from your left side to your right side mid cast. And there's a little tip, it can be called a roll cast recovery, but when you switch from your left to your right, people get a lot of tangles. So if you're tired of tangles, this is a good tip. So I'm gonna stand really close here so you can hear me. 
the fly is gonna start on my left, it's drifting downstream, and I'm gonna roll it into the air and switch it to my right and then make the cast over my right shoulder. So if I take the fly, which is on my left here, and I try to bring it to my right, I'm gonna tangle the fly on my rod or my line. So I'm gonna go throw a series of about four casts, and I want you to watch how I roll cast it using my cack-handed side, and then bring it over to my right. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna fish this for about 30 seconds. Maybe I hook something, maybe I don't, but I want you to pay attention to how I switch from my left to my right because my strong shot is on my right, but when the fly's on my left, I gotta switch. So, here we go. Yep. Aquí? Yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You see the trail? Rainbow. Rainbow. So I'm concentrating on kind of showing you how that casts, but I've been doing that almost all day, depending on what side of the river I'm on and, and the direction the wind is blowing. But the casting, it's so clear, you have to cast a fair distance, even though the water's chopped, you still need to throw 30, 40 footers consistently that are sharp, that are cutting into the wind. And being able to just aerialize the fly, get it out in front of you, and then bring it to your strong side is really gonna make you a much stronger caster. For me, working upstream and primarily into the wind, that has been a really uh, important asset to my casting game today. It's made it a lot of fun because the faster you can move up the river, the more fish you're gonna catch, just plain and simple. There's not a ton of trout per mile in this river, so we need to jump from spot to spot to spot. And if I can't shoot that line and, and move it around the river fast, I'm gonna be very limited in how much ground I can cover. ¿Quieres tener la cámara? Sí, mío. Tranquilo, Diego. just leaving that was like the last spot we we're gonna hike out and fish another river what a killer way to to end i mean <laughs> yeah on this beautiful little freestone river yeah that's a great fish i mean on this little river right here 
in that fast water. I mean, that's a, that's a good trout on any stream here, especially when you think about like where we are. We haven't seen a soul today. What a killer trout, man. That's awesome. Come on in, please. Libre? Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was sweet. So that wraps us up. This was a lot of fun. Uh, we just walked upstream, upwind, up this beautiful canyon. And uh, to end that was like amazing. I've been to, with the Cinco Rios uh, group down here. This is my sixth time and I have fished a new water all four days uh, down here that I've been here. Uh, new area anyway. Uh, so now we're gonna go down, we're gonna have a little lunch and uh, probably fish. We can go to a different river this new afternoon. Name? No, new, uh, yeah, no. River Nueve. Tardes. Is the Mogote River? Mogote. No. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna fish a little different river this afternoon, so we're gonna get two rivers in one day. Uh, just doing some wade fishing. It's been a blast. All right, so just had lunch. Um, yeah, had lunch at our new friend Ree's house. Fenya, Juanito, and Diego. The boys. They got a friend in the area, so we stopped off at their Estancia here and uh, just had a nice lunch inside. Take a look around. This is pretty cool. It's uh, a feather from, I mean, it's a huge feather from an Andean condor uh, right there. That's pretty, pretty outrageous how big that is. So that's kind of cool. You can take a look. This was just a few minutes from where we were fishing and yeah, pretty neat just to bop in. Yeah, they get groceries on the lawn right there. There's chickens everywhere and it's a good life down here. Oh, and the guy is on this side, huh? Oh, no, that's another, yeah, there. Bunch of hands over here, but yeah, pretty cool. Uh, so got done with lunch. We're gonna do a little bit more fishing this afternoon and it's been super hot, but fortunately we got some clouds moving in, cooled off. It was must have been well over 80 degrees Fahrenheit today. So anyway, it feels much, much better now. Uh, we'll fish a couple hours this afternoon and then today is the day where we head back uh, to Cinco Rios and then we're gonna switch and go up to the other lodge, the Estancia del Zorro. So today is change day between the two lodges. So we'll be fishing out of the Estancia del Zorro uh, tomorrow. So anyway, that's our lunch update. We'll see if we uh, get a little fishing in this afternoon. All right, so it's after lunch. Uh, we get some great private access. That's one thing about being with a really good guide crew is they just, they have permission everywhere you go, it seems like. And then uh, another pro tip is uh, we got to climb the fence here and there's barbed wire on the top. Uh, Fenya, our guide, suggests throwing a floor mat right there so I can keep my waders nice, safe, and sound. Uh, we're gonna go down, we're gonna fish, we're gonna wade fish. Uh, larger river this afternoon, hoping to pick up uh, trout on two rivers today. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, let's go down there and uh, see if we can't get some. Now, time to wrap up the day. Uh, we finished off uh, the day wading the Paloma River. Uh, I was able to catch a uh, small rainbow here uh, in this area. Went and waded all along the cliff wall, waded up these beautiful ledges. Uh, just wasn't able to find any in there, but that's okay. Uh, we're gonna head back to the lodge a little early because tonight we're gonna move to another lodge. And uh, yeah, 
I kind of have to know when to say when uh, and just call it a day. It's been a good day. And of course, I was waiting down uh, the ledge right there, just finishing up, had to throw a few more casts, wound up stumbling and getting a soaked arm. So uh, that's my lesson for the end of the day. Know when to say when, when you've had a good day, wrap it up. Uh, but yeah, beautiful uh, rivers today. Caught some very nice fish and just looking forward to nice dinner tonight and a new adventure on new water tomorrow. A little bonus on the way back to the car, fresh cherries in January. How good is that? Look at this. Just hiking up from the river and Fenya showed us where the good stuff is right here. Awesome. Super good.